Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weekly recap. Now, this week is a little different because we don't actually have a content update, but there's just been a lot happening in the community that I think it was still worth making an update for the week. Now, as many of you may know, the Equipment Rebalance update was slated to come out yesterday, but it actually ended up being postponed. As we're going to be having a look at that, as well as a special extra long live stream with the Jagex moderators, as well as anything else interesting that happened in the OSRs community this week. Anyway guys, if you do enjoy this type of video, don't forget to leave it a like, always appreciate it, and let's get started. Alright, so first up here, we're going to go over the update that was released on February 8th that included additional changes to the Equipment Rebalance proposal. Yes, I know the proposal is now on hold, but a lot of these changes I could see sticking in the eventual equipment rebalance update that we end up getting. Okay, so before the entire update was postponed, here are the final changes that Jagex ended up making to the equipment rebalance proposal. Now, first up here, they fully excluded the blessed dehyde armor from any of the equipment rebalancing changes. Now, originally they were going to be nerfing it at the same rate as black dehyde, and then they scaled that back a bit to just be nerfing it less than black dehyde. But now in the current proposal, they will be leaving blessed dehyde completely unchanged, which, which means it will be a superior defensive option to to black dehyde on top of giving an additional pair bonus. I do think a lot of people were pretty happy with this change because it really added a bit of a separation between blessed dehyde and black dehyde, which means going forward players may legitimately consider bringing blessed dehyde into the wilderness or to bosses where normally they may have just gone with the 10,000 GP black dehyde, added a bit more risk versus reward. Alright, so next up here, the Din's Bulwark has been changed again. Now, the magic defense that was added on to the Din's Bulwark has been scaled back to only minus 10, where it was minus 25 before. They were still planning on going forward with the minus 25% reduction to melee defenses, and I think they actually ended up reducing the range defense back to only 10% above the currently offered stats in game. Now, originally, Jagex was planning on resetting personal best times at a variety of different bosses, although not all of them. However, in the blog on February 8th, they decided that they wouldn't be resetting personal best kill times anywhere, although you would be free to reset them if you want. Now, there were not any more changes to the blowpipe yet. The only thing to mention regarding the blowpipe is that they are aware that some NPCs may require stat tweaking if they were somewhat balanced around using a blowpipe. And finally here at the bottom, they address why they are not releasing a new piece of equipment to kind of fill the gap that the blowpipe is going to leave by being nerfed. Now they said they're not ready to release a design yet, but they are working on an announcement to reveal later this summer, so not very close at all. However, there should be some more information regarding that in an upcoming Gillenor Gazette. Now the whole idea of the equipment rebalance was to have it come out before the combat achievements update, which was slated to be coming out very soon. Uh, so soon in fact that the equipment rebalancing update was slated to come out yesterday. Uh, so it definitely felt like that was coming out very quickly. I mean, for example, if you compare that to the death rework, it felt like that was on the table and being talked about for over a year with many, many different iterations to it. Uh, so because of a very large community backlash, as well as maybe just not having enough time to polish it completely, on February 9th, Jagex finally officially announced that the equipment rebalance had been postponed. Now here is the initial statement regarding the equipment rebalance delay, although I assume we're going to get a lot more information when the live stream starts in about half an hour. Now what I can surmise from the small kind of blog post, that the main reason that they are delaying the equipment rebalance beyond the huge reaction from the community is one, to give it obviously more time to polish it off, get more community feedback, and tweak it to be as good as possible. And two is to give a little bit more time to align the current proposal with new content and new items that could be coming in 2021 or further in the future. I think a lot of players felt that they were just going to be leaving a giant hole with the equipment rebalancing with nothing to really fill the void, as they weren't really planning on buffing crystal armor or crystal weapons a substantial amount, and there was really just nothing to fill the gap. So I think they're going to be taking the time to kind of maybe bring forward some ideas they have and maybe they're ready to make a big reveal about future content, and the current equipment changes can then hopefully be balanced around that future content. Now because the equipment rebalance has been delayed, so has the combat achievements, because they are pretty adamant about wanting to get the equipment rebalance through before they release combat achievements, which is fair because everything could theoretically then just be devalued immediately. Uh, so combat achievements have been delayed and no update this week. However, that said, next week on February 17th, we're going to be getting the Old School RuneScape's 8th birthday holiday event, an update to LMS with the new Wild Varrock map, as well as a sneak peek on a future quest, perhaps, that is called What Lies Below Ice Mountain. Now, this week was a little bit different as far as the weekly Q&A went. It was actually an hour and a half, and at the beginning, the leadership team answered some questions regarding equipment rebalance, count services, 
uh, content creators getting special treatment, etc. All of the very topical questions of the week. Now, once again, this was kind of long form discussion. So if you want to get the full context of all of the situations, I would highly recommend going ahead and watching the live stream, which will be linked in the description. Okay, first up here, the question of the week, why was the rebalance postponed? Well, there are quite a few different answers to this question and quite a few different reasons. One reason that they highlight a lot is going forward, they actually want to split up the equipment rebalance into multiple different sections instead of dropping it all at once. That way they can spend a lot more time on each section and make sure it's perfect before releasing it. For example, they might spend an entire update just making sure the blowpipe is balanced and released correctly, along with maybe targeting nerfs on certain NPCs and tackling issues with the availability of darts and really just doing that all in one package. After that, maybe they'll do an entire update just on the bulwark changes, then maybe one on all the non-controversial stuff like the Dragon Warhammer, and then maybe finally doing one on Dehyde. They also have a lot of big ticket items and content coming in 2021, and they feel like splitting up the equipment rebalance and releasing it more in tandem with other updates would be a better solution. One thing I definitely want to highlight is that the equipment rebalance is definitely still going to be coming. A lot of people will still undoubtedly not like it, but they'll have more time to consider everything. Okay, so next up here, can a new way to get rune darts or dragon darts be added for Ironman, or alternatively, maybe add in amethyst darts instead? Now, they're not really generally a fan of just making dragon darts and rune darts way more accessible, because that would affect everyone, including main accounts. They are aware that it is an issue and that Ironmen are going to be hit a bit harder by the nerf than main accounts. While as an Ironman, you did choose to limit yourself, at the same time, this is taking something away that existed when you originally made the Ironmen. Another idea is adding in another dart that would be more easily accessible, for example the Amethyst dart. But at that point, then wouldn't Amethyst just become the most universally used dart everywhere and that doesn't really solve the problem at all. Another idea was crystal darts that you can make out of crystal shards that at least at that point would be available from both PVM and skilling, but they don't have a solution for that yet. Can we get some of the uncontroversial updates from the equipment rebalance sooner? Like the Dragon Warhammer for example. And the short answer is yes, they would like to do that. Now why are you guys focusing on the equipment rebalance when there are more pressing issues like bots? Well the reality is they want to tackle both, and it's not really an issue of doing one or the other, there are different teams working on both of these. Both these issues are important and ideally they can be dealt with in tandem, and that's what they want to do. Will the definition of power creep in the future only be reflected by an item's rarity or the GP value? They don't think that there's really a one-size-fits-all answer for this, as it's really going to be context-dependent. While the blowpipe is cheap, the fundamental reason why it's getting nerfed is because of how widely used it is at pretty much all pieces of content, even those that aren't even really meant to be killed with ranged. What happened to the blog on account security from back in 2019? Now updates on account security has been put on the back burner, but not for very long. Right now they are prioritizing fixing the too many login issues first, as they deem that is one of the highest priority issues to solve. Okay, and finally here they have a couple questions regarding whether YouTubers or content creators get special treatment. They didn't really answer this question that much, and it is all kind of regarding the 1013 incident. If you guys somehow don't know about it, essentially a very well-known PKer and streamer called 1013 uh, was allegedly caught cheating on his main account, but after some investigation it turns out that it wasn't actually him on the account it was someone else that he had account shared with. Essentially, it ended up getting the ban repealed, which was incredibly controversial. Now, this is the response that Jagex gave, and it wasn't really much to go off of. So the question was, are streamers generally getting special treatment when it comes to upholding the rules? Generally, no. One could argue the opposite, actually, because they are under the spotlight. In the case of 1013, we advised the player to submit an appeal ticket for a banned account, and their account got unbanned. That was all they said. So the next question is, so cheating is fine as long as whoever created the account isn't doing it. The answer, ultimately you are responsible for your account. We do look at the context of the situation and whether the hijacking was legit. I guess so to kind of decrypt these answers a bit is Jagex felt that 1013 had his account legitimately hijacked, where the majority of the community feels that he just shared the account with someone and that's his own problem. So that's pretty much it for the leadership live stream and pretty much all regarding equipment rebalance and their plans for the future. I hope you guys found it useful and we'll be back next week with a more normal weekly recap. Now before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A huge thank you to Ocelot, Kush Patel, Brad Sings, Brian Robinson, Zach Staba, and Cappy who all subscribed at the Dragon tier. You guys are awesome. Thank you again. Joining Base Titch, Birdbot, Grumpy Chef, Timothy Chen at the Runite tier, and of course all of you guys. I really appreciate you. If any of you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do it. You'll get access to my video release schedule, get a custom role in my Discord, as well as be immortalized in all of my future videos. 
Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.